Do you want over 50 hours of battery life on your Galaxy Watch 4 without having to sacrifice your favorite features like the always on display? Then you've come to the right place. And special thanks to Best Buy for sponsoring this video. They currently have a deal with up to $40 off the Galaxy Watch 4 and you can get it with in-store pickup or fast delivery. Click the link in the description or the pinned comment below if you wanna get the deal before it's gone. The first thing you wanna do is change your watch face to something darker because this is an OLED screen and the lighter the image is on the screen, the more battery it's gonna use. To change the watch face, just long press the screen and select something darker. Alternatively, you could tap the customize text underneath the watch face, then swipe across and look for an option called background color and scroll down until you find something darker. The next thing we're gonna do is adjust some display settings. So we're gonna swipe up to look at all of our apps, go to the settings application, go to display, then tap brightness, and we're gonna reduce the brightness to just below 50%. By default, the display brightness is set to just over 50%, so by reducing it just one notch, it's not gonna make much of a difference for visibility for day-to-day -day use, but it will make a difference for battery life. And if you want, you can even lower the brightness even further to save even more battery life. Since I'm filming a video right now, I'm gonna turn the brightness all the way back up to 100%, but whenever I'm not filming videos, I do set the brightness to just below 50%. If we go back a page, the next thing you could do is turn off auto brightness. Turning this off will stop some background processing and increase your battery life. Just know that if you disabled auto brightness and you have your brightness set to something really low, like maybe 30%, then you go outside on a really bright day, it might be hard to see the screen. So you wanna add the brightness shortcut to your quick toggles. To get to your quick toggles, just swipe down from the top of the screen. You can see that I already have my brightness toggle here, but if you didn't see it there or in any of these other pages, you could tap the plus icon at the end. Then that'll show you all your available quick toggles. You should see brightness, tap that. Then you can long press it and drag it to whichever page you'd like. Scrolling further down the display settings will get you to another setting you wanna change and that's your screen timeout. You wanna set that to the lowest setting of 15 seconds. This is still more than enough time to see all of your notifications without keeping the screen on too long and wasting battery life. The next change will need to be done on your phone. Just open up the Galaxy wearable application that was installed when you connected your Galaxy Watch 4 for the first time. Then go to Watch Settings, then Notifications, and make sure that you turn off notifications for anything that's not important. So if you don't wanna get a notification for every single email that comes in, you can just turn those off. And by reducing the amount of unnecessary notifications, you'll be able to increase your battery life. If you scroll a bit further down on this page, you'll see Advanced Notification Settings. If you tap this, you get the option to turn off this feature called Turn On Screen. What this does is automatically turn on your watch's screen whenever a notification comes in, regardless of whether you actually turned your wrist to look at the watch. Turning this off will make sure that your screen only turns on with notifications if you turn your wrist to look at the watch when the notification comes in. Since the Watch 4 supports advanced sleep tracking, some of you are probably gonna wanna sleep with the watch on. If you do that, you're gonna wanna make sure that you turn on good night mode. This is gonna disable the touch to wake, turn bezel to wake, and turn your wrist to wake features. And that's gonna prevent you from interacting with your watch while you sleep. The only way to turn the screen on when good night mode is enabled is to press one of the two side keys. Speaking of sleep tracking, if you wanna save more battery life while you're sleeping, open up the Samsung Health application, Scroll all the way to the bottom and tap settings. Scroll down just a little bit and you'll see blood oxygen during sleep and snore detection options. If you're concerned about the amount of oxygen you're getting while you sleep, this may be a good feature to keep on. But if that's something you're not concerned with or you've tracked your blood oxygen while sleeping for a couple weeks and saw that there were no issues, you could just turn this off to save some more battery life. And the same is true for snore detection. If you're someone who doesn't snore or you've used this feature and found out that snoring really isn't an issue for you, you can tap that. Then that'll bring up the snore detection features on your phone and you can just disable it from there. While we're in these settings, if we scroll back up a little bit, you'll see heart rate and stress measurements. Currently they're set to measure continuously, but you can save a bit of battery life if you switch to measuring every 10 minutes or switch to manual only. If you switch to manual only, it'll only measure your heart rate when you manually start a heart rate measurement or when you're doing a workout. And for stress, you can measure continuously or just manually if you wanna save some battery life. Scrolling further down, there's an option called activities to detect. Now what this does is automatically detect if you're doing a workout and starts the workout tracking automatically. If you're someone who always manually starts your workouts and you don't think you'll ever use this feature, you can turn that off to save a bit more battery life. Scrolling a little bit further down reveals another option called inactive time alerts. What this does is alerts you when you've been inactive for a set period of time. Right now, it's set to get alerted after 50 minutes of inactivity. The purpose of these alerts is to remind you to get up and start moving. But when this feature is enabled, it's always gonna be monitoring your movement in the background and using up some of your battery life. So if this is a feature you don't care for, I would definitely turn it off. Now we're gonna change some sound and vibration settings by going back into the settings application 
and going to sounds and vibration. Instead of using vibrations for your alerts, try using sounds instead because that's going to use less battery life. If you'd prefer to get notifications through vibration instead of sound, there are some other settings you can change to save battery instead. If you scroll down a bit further, you can tap the vibration text and switch from a long vibration to a short vibration. You can also scroll down a bit further and switch from a strong vibration to a light vibration. And if the vibration just isn't noticeable enough for you when you have it on light and short, try changing just one of these settings at a time instead of turning them both on and using more battery life. Backing out to the main sound and vibration settings and scrolling down towards the bottom, you'll see an option called System Vibration. These are all the vibrations you get when interacting with the watch. So when you tap a toggle, you'll feel a bit of a vibration. When you scroll to the bottom of something, when you go back a page, you'll feel little vibrations when doing those actions. Turning this off is a great way to save some battery life without hindering the performance of the watch. If you don't use Bixby often, which you should, and I'll have a video linked at the end of this video if you want to see some powerful Bixby features, but if even after that you still don't use Bixby, you can turn off the voice wake up feature to save some more juice. Just open up the Bixby application, scroll all the way to the bottom, tap settings, tap voice wake up, and make sure it's turned off. The default keyboard option on the Galaxy Watch 4 is a pretty slow to type on because it's this T9 style typing and it takes quite a long time to send any messages. And the more time it takes to send the message, the more battery life you're using. So if you want to send messages much faster and save battery life while you're at it, then you're going to want to download an application called Gboard. So go to your applications and open up the Google Play Store, tap the search icon, tap the keyboard, and search for Gboard. At the top, you should see Gboard, the Google keyboard. Tap that and install it. Once it's installed, go to Settings, General, Input, Keyboard List and Default, Default Keyboard, and change that to Gboard. Now, if I go back into a message, I'll get a full QWERTY keyboard with swipe support, which is significantly faster for sending messages. If you go to your quick toggles and swipe over, you should see an option for Wi-Fi. This can be used to download music or connect to your phone when you're outside of Bluetooth range. Whenever you're not downloading music or you're not going to be outside of Bluetooth range from your phone, you can just keep this feature off to save a bit more battery life. And the same is true for the GPS. If you're always going to be using your phone's GPS, just turn it off on your watch to save even more battery life. And if you're someone who doesn't use mobile payments like Samsung Pay or Google Pay, you can turn off NFC. By default, whenever you start navigating somewhere using Google Maps on your phone, it's automatically going to bring up the navigation on your watch as well. That's really handy if you're going to be walking or biking somewhere, but not quite as useful if you're going to be driving somewhere. So to disable that feature for driving specifically, go to the Google Maps application, tap the search icon, scroll all the way down and tap settings, Tap Auto Launch and disable it for driving. And if you're someone that doesn't bike anywhere, you could also disable it for biking as well. After applying all the changes up to this point in the video, I was able to get just over 50 hours of battery life on my 46 millimeter Galaxy Watch 4 Classic. That was with two nights of sleep tracking, minimal use otherwise, and no exercise tracking. If I were to include exercise tracking, I would have lost an extra 1% battery for every 10 minutes of a basic workout, or about 2.5% every 10 minutes if the exercise was running outdoors, using the built-in GPS on the watch, while also leaving my phone at home, and connecting Bluetooth earbuds to the watch so I could listen to music on the run. So that's the worst case scenario for battery usage during a workout. So if I did a basic 30 minute workout every day, then my battery life would have been just less than two days. And if I was also doing other things like using the watch for navigation or sending a ton of messages with the watch, then it obviously would have reduced my battery life a bit more. The way I got over four and a half days of battery life was to simply put the watch on the charger whenever I was getting ready for the day or getting ready for bed. The time it takes me to shower, get changed, brush my teeth was more than enough time each day to keep the watch running for that four and a half days. To be more specific, it's about 30 minutes of charging a day and it doesn't interrupt my daily routine at all. Now keep in mind, this is battery life without ever turning off the always on display. If I were to turn off the always on display, I would increase my battery life to about 62 hours without ever putting the watch on a charger. And if I do the same 30 minutes of charging every day with the always on display turned off, then I'd get about 10 days of battery life. Now let's take a look at some bonus things you could do to extend the battery life even further. If you go to your settings, then scroll down until you get to advanced features, then scroll down towards the bottom, you'll see a section called gestures. And in this section are three different gestures you can do to answer calls, dismiss alerts and calls, or quick launch an application. 
These are pretty cool features that I personally like to keep on, but if these are features that you don't really use that often, then you can turn them off. And in case you're curious, the answer calls gesture lets you answer a call by simply raising and lowering your wrist a couple times. To dismiss alerts and calls, you'll just have to rotate your wrist a couple times. And if you want to quick launch an application, you would just have to turn your wrist down twice quickly within five seconds of the screen turning on. So to quickly demonstrate that, let me go ahead and turn my screen off, turn it back on, turn our wrist down twice, and you'll see that it takes me right to my workouts. So as you can see, these are pretty cool gestures and I personally like to keep these on, but if it's something that you don't think you'll use, you can turn these off to save a little bit more battery life. If you want your Watch 4 to charge faster, you could turn off the charging information that shows up on the screen while it's charging. To do that, turn your screen on, go to settings, scroll down to display, then scroll all the way to the bottom and turn off this show charging info toggle. Now when I turn the screen off, it's not gonna show any information while it's charging and be able to charge a little bit faster. And if I ever wanna check the charge status, I can just turn the screen on, pull down the quick toggles, and I can see the charge percentage right at the top. If you're in a bind and really need to save some power quickly, you can always turn on power saving mode by going to your quick toggles and tapping the power saving mode toggle. And if you really need to save some battery, you can go to your settings, scroll down to battery, then scroll to the bottom until you see an option called watch only. If I enable this, it's going to turn my watch into literally just a watch. I won't get notifications. I won't be able to do any of those sorts of things. All I can do is press one of the buttons to see the time. To get out of this mode, just hold the button for a few seconds. If you don't wanna go full power save mode, you can enable grayscale by triple tapping with two fingers. This will help you save a bit of battery life without having to sacrifice core features. To enable this feature, go to settings, accessibility, scroll down to advanced settings, then scroll down to two finger triple tap, then enable grayscale. Once that's enabled, I'll be able to triple tap with two fingers on any screen to either enable or disable grayscale mode. We could also invest in an extra charger or two and keep one next to your bed, another one at your desk if you have a desk job, or on a counter where you typically plug your phone into charge. Or maybe even keep one in your car if you wanna charge on your way to and from work. These are also available at Best Buy and I'll have links to these in the description as well. If you wanna see the first 10 things you should do when you get your Galaxy Watch, you can click this link right here. If you want to see why Bixby is amazing on the Galaxy Watch 4, you can click that link right over there. And if you already have a Galaxy Watch and you want to see the top 20 unknown features, you can click this link down here. And if you want to see more deep dive coverage just like this for all the latest tech products, you can click that subscribe link right over there. That's it for this tech episode. God bless guys and I'll catch you in the next one.